So I graduated with a communications degree, which I actually didn't use at first uh, because I was promoting nightclubs. Uh, but then at 28 years old, I realized that if I continued on this path, you know, I would have no legacy. Or if I did have a legacy, it would be, here lies a man who got a million people wasted. So I went to Liberia, West Africa. And as I went into these remote areas, I realized that people didn't have clean water to drink. They didn't have their most basic need for health met. Sentencing laws in the past and the way in which they were enforced in the past was tremendously harsh. But because folks were incarcerated 10 and 20 and 25 years ago, some of them are still sitting in prison, whereas if they were sentenced today, uh, they would have a much lighter and much shorter sentence. I discovered my interest in rural development and rural education in China when I was a study abroad student in Beijing. I came to see that even if you had a very nice school building and books and computers, um, how the teachers were using that and what were the goals of education were more at the heart of um, improving quality. If you look at high blood pressure today, 30% of deaths in black men is explained by high blood pressure. The patients I see in clinic, by the time they come to me in clinic, they've had stroke. For the most part, they've had kidney disease already. Some are on their way to dialysis. We've got to figure out a way to demystify health. My work is focused on developing strategies to reduce the burden of cardiovascular disease in blacks in community-based settings. We do work in barbershops, in black churches, in senior centers, and we've cared for probably 9,000 black men across the city. So I'm hoping that with our work, we'll provide the body of evidence that can allow policymakers to make that shift and start funding preventive care We've taken that, that walk actually also to Nigeria, where 300,000 children in Nigeria every year um, have what they call the maternal to child transmission of HIV. So what they proposed to a colleague of mine was to do baby showers in churches, where the pregnant women, they receive their HIV care right there in the church. We all believe that education is a long-term endeavor uh, and that change doesn't happen overnight, um, which is one of the reasons why we think it's so important to invest in teachers. Hey, Dan. Hi, Wei The Rural China Education Foundation uh, works to give rural teachers the appropriate training and resources and network to help them develop more student-centered and community-based teaching methods and curriculum. We want students to be active learners and to um, take control of their own education so that they can become people who make a positive impact on their communities and promote rural development. Students who are interested in criminal law and criminal justice and criminal justice reform apply for a fellowship and we get to work on lots of different and interesting projects. Some of it is research-based but then a very important part of what we do is work with the Mercy Project. The Mercy Project is designed in order to assist federal prisoners who have undergone remarkable rehabilitation and are nonviolent offenders with getting their sentences reduced or commuted altogether. President Obama has made a strong commitment to reviewing these clemency petitions, and to date he's commuted the sentences of more than 500 federal prisoners. And a number of those were Mercy Project petitions. When I started, the mission was simple. It was to end the water crisis in our lifetime, to help see a day where nobody was drinking dirty water. Well, we just turned 10. We've now been able to fund clean water projects in over 20,000 communities uh, across 24 countries for 6.4 million people. So we're closing in, we're almost at 1% of the problem. So we need to do a lot more. We need to invite a lot more people into this issue because it's just not okay. It's not okay that people in 2016 are dying on our planet because of bad water. I enjoy this walk. I see the changes in people's face. I see the light bulb go on. I see them understand finally why this is important. NYU is the one place where the entrepreneurial spirit made it easy for us to, to be creative. 
When I'm thinking of doing work at NYU, I don't see barriers. I'm thinking of how can I make this happen? <laughs>